Episode 115, Tyler Brook. Good morrow and welcome to the realm. I'm JV Hilliard. And today I have a very special guest, a longtime friend of mine, Tyler Brook. Tyler and I met when I was a guest on his podcast a few months ago. Tyler is not just a podcaster, however, he's a black belt and he's also a geek culture enthusiast as well as an author, man of many talents. Tyler Brook, welcome to the realm. I like how you said black belt, <laughs> the whole Jackie Chan thing. You didn't say he's an author or he's a geek enthusiast. No, you just did. He's a black Hey, man. I, you know, it's funny because this is back to back shows where I've had someone on that is a martial arts expert. But, you know, someone like you, black belt, I was going to ask what kind of black belt? Uh, Japanese karate, specifically Shukukai karate. And do you still practice today, or is that something that, uh, you know, you only use when, when someone accosts you at a bar or wherever? Well, like any skill that one has, it's always good to practice it because you never know when you're going to need it. Sure, sure. And Tyler, one of the things that I try to do on all of my shows is invite artists to come on and talk about their work. And I know that Peter and the Cold Christmas uh, is a very important work to you. Uh, and as an author, I can I can respect all the passion that you put into that. Please tell our fans uh, a little bit about that experience and what it means to you personally. My book is actually more of a children's book. Um, I wrote it as originally as like a what if scenario. Um, what if somebody intentionally misbehaved just to get cold? But then as I was writing it, I realized I saw a lot of myself and Peter. He was misunderstood and people judged him for it. They even got to know him. I don't know if he knows about me, but I am technically on the Asperger syndrome and I had difficulties communicating as a child. So Tyler, for the the book, uh, did you find a lot of this in your own introspection about yourself? And was this a bit of a catharsis where you were able to release some of those emotions and show them through uh, the characters in the book in the hopes that people can learn about your your condition and maybe the situation that your character finds himself in? Originally, no. But as I was writing it, um, I did notice a lot of myself and Peter, the way he just did stuff without really communicating, the way he just misbehaved. And ultimately, it's really more about self-sacrifice and getting to know people before you uh, judge them. And I felt like it was a good way to share my experiences in a what I hope to be a Christmas classic. You know, I've got to be honest with you, too. That's the one thing I find refreshing about this community of geeks and nerds. I mean, people are out here really trying to help you be successful and they, and they mean it. It is a really loyal and helpful community. And, and to that end, I know that you've got a, a number of podcasts that you're involved in. What brought you um, to the podcasting world? That's a good question. I've been talking geek for years. I might as well capitalize on that. Boom, podcasts. And the good thing about it is that it really helped me reconnect with a lot of uh, people. And when people say, let's keep in touch, they actually don't. But these people actually do, and I'm really grateful to have them in my life. So I, I know on your show, some of the most interesting things you've done are, are pretty unorthodox. I mean, a lot of folks, you know, come on to podcasts, and it's the same questions over and over again. When I got introduced to you, you were asking me to be involved in this tournament of power. Can you explain to our, our viewers and our listeners a little bit more about what you've got going on? Absolutely. Um, for those of you that have seen Dragon Ball Super, the tournament of power was a fight between eight different universes. I thought for my 80th episode, why not do something similar and have 80 different franchises? And these franchises are Marvel Comics, DC, Shueisha, Hasbro, Disney, and Pixar. But let's face it, Disney's just going to own everything. <laughs> well, speaking of Disney, uh, I know that you're you know this pop culture enthusiast. What's your opinion on taking Disney movies and making them live action movies? Are you a fan? Are you not a fan? I am going to answer this as two different questions. I will answer this as a businessman, and I will answer this as an artist slash fan. As a businessman, it makes an incredible amount of sense. These are already well-recognized names. The Lion King, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast. Giving them a live-action adaptation will bring more money to the Disney business. Now, as a fan, I find it grossly offensive. You're just putting on a new coat of paint when on what's already a good product. Look, I, I know that you 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 just outside of movies, you know, you, you play a lot of games. You're a, you're a tabletop guy. You're a video guy. What are some of your favorites and why? I try to be a jack of all trades. Um, 
some of the games I personally enjoy, um, one of my sponsors actually gave me their card game to play, and it's actually pretty engaging. It's Dragons vs. Unicorns, the card game. That was fun. Ramen Fury is another wonderful card game I've played. And as a sucker for the classics, Settlers of Catan. But as far as video games go, I'm more of the your Marvel vs. Capcom, your Super Smash Bros., your Pokemon Stadium kind of thing. It's just more engaging than your other games, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So getting back to what you're watching, some of the shows that might be there, what is Tyler watching now or something that might be under the radar you think our listeners and and viewers should uh, tap into? Well, I try to watch Gargoyles as much as I can. I've just caught the first episode of Chainsaw Man, which is interesting. Uh, Bleach, the Thousand Year War arc. I just finished She-Hulk. I'm not entirely a fan of how they did Scar. He looks like Hulk's kid if it was Bring Your Son to Work Day. <laughs> well, I, I want the, the She-Hulk stuff is interesting to me because, of course, you know, there, there's some unmistakable politics in it. So here's a bit of a curveball for you, but I'm just curious because I know that you're involved in a, in a lot of, of this stuff. If there was a series out there that you'd like to see come back or rebooted or restarted, uh, what would it be and why and how would you do it? I have a bunch of cool ideas. I mean, as always, I would like to see more Gargoyles after the first season of season three. I would like to see a Jackie Chan spinoff where we see the tale of Shen Du you know, before the actual main series starts, because I feel like there are so many questions um, that need to be answered about him. But uh, I'm always a fan of seeing new stuff, because let, let's face it, how many Batman movies, series do we have? Plenty, right? Yeah, plenty. I mean, DC, we get it. Oh, I'm Batman. I'm a bat because my parents died. <laughs> now, you know, we're almost at the end of our time, my friend. And what I want to do, we do this with everybody that comes on the show, uh, is we have a little bit of a speed round. We call it the lightning round. And I ask you five or six questions that I'll throw at you in the hopes that uh, you'll be able to answer them in one or two words or maybe a, a brief explanation. And if you really catch me off guard, I'm going to stop you. We're going to go into it a little bit. But um, if tell me when you're ready and I'll start firing away. A second, I'll lube up the throat. <laughs> Get ready for it, man. Go. Oh. Your favorite card game. I'd probably say Solitaire if I'm playing by myself, but I'm always a sucker for the classics, like uh, poker. How about your favorite comic book and your favorite comic book character? If we're talking globally, I've always liked Luffy from One Piece, but if we're talking domestically, I've always liked Batman because he gets all this stuff done without having to rely on super strength or flying or any other Meshuggah powers that exist. <laughs> all right, all right. Good. Well, well said and good enough. Okay. Celebrity death match between Steven Spielberg and James Cameron in their primes. Who wins? Well, where does this fight take place? And if you're going to discuss any hypothetical fight, you got to know where it takes place. It's like the old celebrity death match, the claymation stuff on, a, on, on, on MTV, right? They're just dropped into the ring. I say Steven Spielberg. Just on size? He's got a little bit more heft to him? Well, yeah, and he's a lot more creative. Ah, well, there you go. Well, Tyler, thank you very much for being on The Realm this week. We appreciate your time. And as always... Interesting conversation with you, my friend. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks for coming on. Listen, I look forward to working with you on more projects. So I told you guys that Tyler was going to be an interesting interview. And I always try to have guests like him on, especially those that are influencers in our geek community. So thank you, Tyler, for being on The Realm. And with that, I want to mention that the audiobook for Borden's Lair has dropped this past week. You can find it at places like Audible, Apple Books, or even going to dragonmoonpress.com, my publisher. Thanks again for watching The Realm. I'm J.V. Hilliard, and may your gods go with you.